Are you ready to take the first step to embrace the unknown and step out of your comfort zone? Welcome to Step Out, Step In, the podcast that inspires you to break free from your familiar to explore the extraordinary. Hello, this is your host, David Jim. Every Monday at 6 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, join me as we dive headfirst into thrilling stories of personal growth, daring adventures, and transformative experiences. Get ready to be motivated, inspired, and empowered to live your life to the fullest. So mark your calendar, set your alarm, and get ready to step out, step in with me every Monday at 6 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Don't miss out on the adventure of a lifetime. Subscribe now and let's step into the unknown together. This is Step Out, Step In. The journey begins here. Step Out, Step In podcast live on Mondays at 6 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Subscribe today. All right, so a blame game, it's, um, it's a human, it's a common human tendency to deflect responsibility for our own actions or circumstances onto others. Let me, let me say that again, a blame game, it's a common human tendency to deflect responsibility for our own actions or circumstances onto others. Now, instead of taking ownership and responsibility and seeking solutions, we kind of point fingers 
and, and assign fault and blame to something or or to someone and sometimes even resort to scapegoating. We're trying to find a scapegoat out of uh, the situation or out of the circumstances or whatever it is. So instead of taking ownership, we seek to point fingers. We assign fault. And, and that is what blame game is, is, is about. You know, for you and I to go through this, we have to understand that you are not the first to blame. The blame game started all the way in the Garden of Eden, <laughs> way back. And uh, I, I want us to look at a few scriptures in, in the Bible so we can understand um, where we are coming from. And we'll look at a few things as to how we can stop the blame game, take responsibilities of our actions and um, so we don't point fingers. In Genesis chapter 3, and looking at it from verse 9 to 13, it says, Then the Lord called to Adam and said to him, Where are you? So he said, I heard your voice in the garden and I was afraid because I was naked and I hid myself. You know, this is what we say. Adam failed the first test. <laughs> God asked him, where are you? And he was talking about his, um, you know, when God asked him where he was, it wasn't really it didn't mean that God didn't know where he was, but God wanted him to take responsibility of he being disobedient to him. He said, I was naked, and I hid myself. And he said, who told you you were naked? Have you eaten from the fruit, from the tree of which I commanded you that you should not eat? That is what God was asking him. <laughs> Then the man said, the woman whom you gave to me, the woman whom you gave to be with me, she gave me the tree and I ate. That is when the first blame game started. God was asking him to take responsibility of where he was. But then he shifted the blame to God and to the woman. He said, the woman you gave, you see, he, he, <laughs> He pointed a finger at God, all to God. Say, the woman whom you gave to me, to be with me, she gave me the tree and I ate. And the verse 13 says, And the Lord God said to the woman, What is this you have done? And there goes the other blame game. And, she, and the woman said, The serpent deceived me and I ate. So that is the first time it was recorded when the blame game started. Now we always want to shift the blame. We always want to shift the blame from us. At least once you point the fingers to your, at somebody else or to somebody else, <laughs> you sometimes you feel good about it. But why do we engage in this behavior? And I'm glad you asked that question. You know, the, the, the roots of the blame game can be, uh, as I said earlier, or can be traced back to our um, inner desire to protect our ego and to preserve our self-image. You know, sometimes admitting fault can be a very uncomfortable and even painful it, you know, it requires humility to be able to do that. And it also requires uh, you to be vulnerable. So it's humility and vulnerability. And these are the qualities that many of us struggle to embrace. Humility and vulnerability. That is what we struggle to embrace. 
But no matter what, however, as, as uncomfortable as it may be, playing the blame game is ultimately counterproductive. That is, it means it is harmful, it is damaging, it is hurtful, it is dangerous, it is destructive, ladies and gentlemen. And as a person of faith, uh, that is why I said, let me add some scriptures to it so we can know. You know, I, I've read through the scriptures, and one of the um, characters or one of the people that I've, I, I, I've seen or reading through the scriptures has done to be corrected is a man called David. David, the king of Israel. And he's often described in the Bible as a man after God's own heart. <laughs> he's a man after God's own heart. I mean, that is how the Bible describes him. And his char characterization or this characterization is found in the Old Testament. Um, in the Old Testament, we can see it in um, this first Samuel chapter 13. And in the New Testament, in Acts chapter 13. Now, let's, let's take a look at that. Let's take a look at these two scriptures real quick. Um, bear with me. In 1 Samuel chapter 13 and verse 14, it says that, it says that, But now your kingdom shall not continue. The Lord has sought for himself a man after his own heart. Now, this was to King Saul, and, and God, after God had left him, he said, The Lord has sought for himself a man after his own heart, and the Lord has commanded him to be the commander over his people, because you have not kept what the Lord commanded you. That was to King Saul, and God said he had chosen his own, a man after his own heart, and that was David. David was anointed king of Israel when Saul was still the king. And let's look at Acts chapter 13 and verse 22. In Acts 13 verse 22 it says that, And when he had removed him, he raised up for them David as king, to, him, to whom also he gave testimony and said, I have found David the son of Jesse, a man after my own heart who would do all my will. You know, looking at David, and as I want to use him as a template for today, he was one of the people, few people, in fact, he's one of the uh, people that God described him as a man after his own heart. And we want to look at a few reasons why David was considered to be a man after God's own heart. Now, as, as we uh, study the scriptures and all that, I realized that David was one of the people who never blamed anyone for anything. He owned up to whatever he did his transgressions his sins and you know and he knew how to go back to god to ask for repentance <laughs> he never played the blame game so let's look at a few reasons why david was considered a man after god's own heart number one it was because of his faithfulness his faithfulness and trust. You know, one of the things David did was he demonstrated an unwavering faith in God and trusted in, his, in the promises of God. Even when facing challenges and, and, and dangers, David relied on God's guidance and protection. He trusted his God fully. He depended on his God. He had the faith in his God. You know. And number two, it was also about 
his repentance. <laughs> you know, despite his flaws and his mistakes, I mean, we all go through it. We have our flaws. We have our mistakes. We have our shortcomings and all that. David always repented sincerely when he faltered, when he erred. You know, one notable example is his repentance after his uh, affair with Bathsheba and his involvement in the death of Bathsheba's husband, um, Uriah the Hittite. Um, the reference is in 2 Samuel uh, chapter 11 and chapter 12. But, but let's look at one thing here in 2 Samuel chapter 12 and the verse 13. Second Samuel 12 and verse 13. Which says that, So David said to Nathan, You know, this was when the prophet Nathan confronted him and he started off by narrating the story and, and saying all that. David got so angry and, and said, Who can do? Who can commit this kind of sin? And I mean, and, and, and the prophet pointed to him that that is you. You are the one I'm talking about. <laughs> and right there, David, knowing that it was pointed to him, whatever the, uh, the prophet Nathan was telling was about him, he said, I have sinned against the Lord. And Nathan said to David, the Lord also has put away your sins. You shall not die. I was thinking David was going to uh, uh, um, blame uh, Bathsheba for taking a shower during that time <laughs> of the day. I mean, he was walking on 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 in, in his compound, saw Bathsheba taking a shower and all that. I, I was thinking, but he did not blame anyone. He said, "I have sinned against the Lord." He took ownership. He repented sincerely and genuinely. You know, David's repentance showed humility and a desire to maintain a close relationship with God. That is why in Psalm 51, he said, Create me a clean heart and renew that right spirit, that steadfast spirit within me. Cast me not away from thy presence. He, he knew the importance of the presence of God. He said, Whatever I have done, I mean, don't take your presence away from me. He, he wanted to maintain that close relationship with God. And number three, it was about his courage and his bravery. One of the things that God declared him, God said he was a man after his own heart was because of his courage and bravery. You know, David displayed a great courage and bravery, especially in his youth when he had to face Goliath, the Philistine giant and the national challenge. You know, before David showed up on the scene, like the Bible says that Goliath was it wasn't a fight. He was intimidating the, the army of Israel. And for 40 days and 40 nights, he would come in and blaspheme. And, I mean, say all kinds of things against them because they, they, they looked at his stature and they were so much afraid until David showed up on the scene. And when he heard this, this uncircumcised Philistine blaspheming against God and the children of Israel, he says, who is this uncircumcised Philistine? Because he knew that the Philistines, they don't have any covenant with God. <laughs> and when he showed up, the, the Bible says that when, when it was time to fight him, he didn't run away from me, but he ran towards Goliath. That was bravery, courage. He was just a teenager. So his trust in God strengthened him. And, and, and that was his willingness to face challenges head on 
and he showcased his re resilience on God. No, he said to Goliath that you come with you come to me with javelins and swords, and, but I come to you in the name of the Lord. That is the belief that he had in God. That is the courage and the bravery he exhibited. Number four is sensitivity to God's will. You know, one of the things that David sought after God's will and, his, and he desired to follow God's will faithfully. He is known for seeking guidance through prayer and consultation with, 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 with prophets and with God. You know, there was a time David wanted to go fight with the Philistines and, they re and his men, I mean, they rejected them. They went back to Ziklag and everything of theirs had been stolen and taken away by the Amalekites. The Bible says that they wept till they had no more strength to weep. But David did something that was different from the rest of his men. He encouraged himself in the Lord. Then he went to God and, and asked God, shall I pursue and recover? And God gave him the, 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 the assurance. He says, you shall pursue, overtake, and recover all without fear. He knew how to sort the... the uh, uh, um, he knew how to seek God's guidance and he sought God's guidance before he made any step, especially when he, when he had to come to here engaging in a battle. That was his sensitivity to God's will. And he obeyed. There was a time he, he asked God and God said, no, you shall not pursue. And he stayed put till God gave him the go ahead, the green light. Another thing that really made David a man of the God's heart was his passionate worship. <laughs> What's about his passionate worship? You know, David was a talented musician. And um, he was a good songwriter who poured out his heart in worship to God through psalms and songs. His intimate relationship with God was evident in his heartfelt expressions of praise and thanksgiving. Now, when you read the psalms, you can tell most of the psalms that were written, by, majority of the psalms were written by David. And these were songs that he wrote praising and thanksgiving he was passionate about his worship number six is about his leadership <laughs> you know david as a king he led israel with wisdom and justice striving to govern according to God's principles. And that is what he did. You know, he also prioritized his well-being, the, the well-being of his people and sought God's guidance in decision-making. He wouldn't just make any decision. And he was, he was a true leader. So, overall... David, overall David's deep faith, his humility, his repentance, his courage, his worship, and his leadership qualities contributed to his reputation as a man after God's own heart. And with all these qualities, it made him not point fingers. It made him not blame anyone. He took responsibility of anything and everything he went through. Anything he did. Everything he did. He took full responsibility and never played the blame game. Despite his flaws and failures, David's genuine desire to 
honor and serve God set him apart as a significant figure in biblical history. You know, most of the time when David's name is mentioned, <laughs> we quickly equate him to that adulterer who took somebody's wife and killed the husband and all that. But this was a man who genuinely repented from anything he did which was not to the glory of God and never played the blame game. So how can you and I put an end to this destructive cycle, playing the blame game. You know, let's turn, let's turn to some few scriptures as um, we bring this to an end, to a close. Now, when we look at Matthew chapter 7, I, I don't think here I put it in, and in verse 3, it says that, And why do you look at the speck in your brother's eyes, but... Do not consider the plank in your own eyes. You know, sometimes we're so quick to point fingers at someone and we're so quick to identify other people, people's faults. But then we all have something that we don't want to talk about. So in this context, if we can take care of our, our situation, <clears throat> it, would, it would help us a lot not point fingers at people all the time. I remember um, I used to be a supervisor in uh, this, this organization and there was one time one of my um, employees did something which um, you know, everybody has a name. <laughs> so when you do something, but when leadership called, I took full responsibility of that situation because he was under me. I was the supervisor. And they asked, why are you taking full responsibility? Why don't you? I said, I, I am his leader. Let me take full responsibility and I will address it from that point. You know, when I look at this verse, it reminds us of the importance of self-reflection and humility. And I, I want to say that before putting, or before pointing fingers and pointing out the faults of others, we must first examine our own situation and our attitude. When we look at Galatians chapter 6 and the verse 5, Galatians 6 and 5, let me read that real quick. Um, Galatians 6 and 5 says, For each one will carry his own load. <laughs> you have a load to carry, I have a load to carry. We all have to carry our own load. So if we can get to the place of identifying it and Taking full responsibility. Thank you, Brother Charles. <laughs> Taking full responsibility of what we um, what we go through. I believe that is going to save us a lot from playing the blame game. I said from the beginning that anything and anyone you blame, you empower. And, um, and, and can I say this, <laughs> you know, um, most, most, most Christians, we, uh, we, 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 we tend to blame the devil for everything, <laughs> but can I, can I say this, that the devil doesn't have power over you as a child of God until you hand it over to him. There are scriptures in the word of God that tells you that you have authority over the kingdom of darkness. 
you know god christ has given you that power to trample on serpents and scorpions and over every power of the enemy he's given you that power he's he's made you an overcomer he's made you victorious over the things of of the kingdom of darkness but we tend to blame the devil for everything i heard a story one time about <laughs> Say that um, somebody found the devil sitting under a tree and he was crying. And this person asked him, Why are you crying? He said, Oh, it's those Christians. They are blaming me for everything. Sometimes I don't even know anything about what you're talking about, but they blame me for everything. And the person said, Of course. <laughs> you're no good. So why wouldn't they blame you? <laughs> you know. So we cannot control the actions of others but we are accountable for our own choices and behaviors you know by focusing on our own growth and development rather than blaming external factors we can break free from the blame game and cultivate a healthier mindset remember anything and anyone you blame you empower I just wanted it to sink in that is why I, 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 I paused a little bit anyone and anything you blame you empower watch the space and I'll be right back Right, so again thank you so much for joining me tonight episode 62 of a step out step in podcast and tonight's episode was on stop the blame game just before i sign off let me do this real quick i want to introduce my spiritual father to you every tuesday at 6 p.m eastern standard time on facebook and youtube join him on the Ambassador of Hope page. Every Tuesday at 6 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. You know, live with Ambassador of Hope on Tuesdays on YouTube. YouTube is Franco Fosua Pierre Official and Facebook is uh, Ambassador of hope, pay, of hope page. You can't afford to miss this. Um, I know this is one of the things that most people don't do, but you can always make a difference when you go to his web page. Um, let me, let me do this. Um, this is the YouTube page. And one of the things he does for us, he leaves everything there. So you can always go back, listen to it. If it's worth listening to, it is worth sharing. Don't just listen and keep it. Listen, share, comment. Yeah, there we go. So he has everything on there for you. I mean, please go back there. Make that difference. Go listen to it. Share. Um, make notes. Take notes. I mean, these are topics. These topics are epic. It is life changing. It is destiny shaping. And let's do that. You know, these teachings, as, uh, as I said, it's life-changing, destiny shape. It will help you in your spiritual life, your personal life, your, in your business, your career, in your education. It cuts across. I mean, and he tells us that this is not another church. <laughs> it is so amazing. If you haven't subscribed to his YouTube page, please do so. And don't forget to click on the notification bell. So that anytime he puts something, you will be notified. You know, I, I wish you could see my eyes pop. Um, this year is 20 years of ISI, Ion Sharpens Ion. This is uh, um, a, lead, a leadership uh, conference which is held in Atlanta every year. 
This year we are celebrating 20 years, 20 years of excellence in leadership and development. And um, I want you to save the date and make the necessary uh, arrangements to be there, to be there. I mean, you can't afford to miss this. Join us for a milestone event filled with knowledge, filled with connection and celebration. Let's get ready to be part of history in, in the making. Let's get ready. Share this, get prepared, and let's get ready for history in the making. All right. So once again, thank you all so much for allowing me to come your way tonight. And um, as I conclude, in conclusion, you know, the, the blame game is, is a destructive party that inhibits resolution. Instead of assigning faults and pointing fingers, playing the blame game, let's take ownership of our actions. Seek reconciliation and work towards a positive change. Again, I want to thank you for joining me tonight on this episode 62 of Step Out, Step In podcast. Remember, it's never too late to stop playing the blame game and start taking control of your own destiny. Don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube page if you haven't yet done so. Follow me, uh, follow me and like me on Facebook and LinkedIn. And don't forget to comment, share, and let's do this together. All right. And, you know, due to scheduling conflicts, um, let me say this. I'll be taking a break in April to get things sorted out. Um, I'll definitely notify you of when live streaming will resume. So this is just for today. Um, once we, once I get that sorted out, I'll let you know. So until next time, stay curious and keep seeking the truth as we stop playing the blame game, as we take ownership and control of our actions. This has been your host, David Joe. And until we meet next time, I love you. Have a fruitful week, fruitful month, an amazing and productive week. And until we meet again, I say goodbye.